calling everyone. My name is Pranav Anuja. I belong to Faculty of Law and Governance, and in this video, I am going to talk about hearing. Because in previous session, I told you all that in sociological school of jurisprudence, there are various jurists are involved and uh, they have given different meaning to the concept of social justice and the concept of law but they are so interwoven with each other that to understand even the main proponent of sociological jurisprudence you have to understand the earliest founder of this school of law so herring Herring achieved his reputation of sociological jurist by publishing his two main books. The first one is The Spirit of Roman Law. The second one is Law as a Means to an End. Law as a Means to an End was described by Friedman as one of the most important events in the history of legal thought. Now, as I told you in last session, for hearing, law is nothing but expressing purpose. Now in it, hearing de develops his theme of law as expressing purpose and analyzes the role of law in the protection and balancing of individuals and social interest. And now it is from these concepts that hearing derives the definition of law which has cited in the future works of other sociological jurists. So Herring's earlier work in Roman law, that is, uh, as, that is the study of Roman law, uh, he analyzed the concept of po uh, position in a very great detail and was able to construct a theory which explained certain concepts which are related to position and, the, uh, and one of the major concept was Praetor's Praetorian Interdicts. So Herring emphasized the form of the interdicts in the relation to their purpose. So the Roman Praetors had in mind the need to protect those in the control of property. Hence interdictal position could not be described as a reflection of purpose. And his studies in Roman law led him to total opposition to what he described as jurisprudence of concepts. Now, as I told you in previous session, that earlier schools were describing law merely as concepts. And in that very same session, I told you all that sociological school of jurisprudence opposed this idea of law. So when you describe jurisprudence as concept, you are basically enclosing the idea of law into a closed system. Now in the study of Roman law, Herring emphasized that the true significance of Roman law resided not in the logical refinement of its concepts, but rather in its capacity to provide a basis on which concepts might be moduled so as to serve a practical purpose. So purpose, social reality and the jurisprudence which would reflect these principles emerged as the foundations of Herring's approach to the law. So for Herring, purpose was all important. In his preface to law as means to an end, Herring states that the fundamental idea of the text is to demonstrate that purpose is the creator of entire law. There is no legal rule which does not have its origin in some practical purpose. That is in some practical motive. So this he had able to demonstrate 
from his studies of Roman lawmaking. The creation of legal rules resulted from an exercise of human will, that is volition. And such an exercise was to be understood only in terms of a purpose. Now, human activity is undertaken in order that objectives might be attained. That law evolves where volition evolves and it reflects purposes. Now, earlier, Herring was attached to historical school of thinking. So, enunciation of these, uh, enunciation of this principle of purpose in relation to the law marked a turning away for Herring from the doctrines of the German historical jurisprudence movement. So, law could not be understood in terms of the product of savvy silently operating forces of the people's spirit in the eyes of Herring. It did not develop from the springs of nations and conscious folk soul. Rather, it was to be interpreted as a direct social response to perceived purpose. The law emerged in order that problems might be solved and social needs met. It was purposive and existed for ends determined for society by society. So this led to Herring to a very important conclusion that outside society's problem and needs, law had no meaning, it has no rationale. Herring asked what dictated the very purpose to be affected by law. And his answer was, interests dictate purpose. A person's individual interests should be linked to the interest of others so that a social purpose might be enunciated and achieved. The linking of interests the fusing of many sets of individual interests into a unity which reflected common social purpose that is to effectuate uh, every force in the service of humanity is one of the most important functions of the law. The demands of the individuals are to be viewed within the context of society as a whole. And the social framework in which law plays a prominent role exists so as to ease the pursuit and attainment of social purpose. Now, for Herring, the common interest of all was more important than particular individual interest. Every person exists for the world, and the world exists for everybody. Now, this aphorism, Herring refers to this aphorism as embodying the essence of culture and morality. It is the disproportion between man's need and his purpose which necessitates his associating with others so as to attain all those purposes to which he is on his own unequal. Now, nature refers man to the outside world, to his fellows from whom he may derive the assistance he requires. This leads to common interest, which will emerge only when, when all come together from the very nature of social life. And it will require protection, and it is the prime purpose of the protection of society. And it is society which must dominate the law, its ideology and institutions, purposes and not abstract concepts characterizes the laws within the society. Now, because of the superiority of common interest, it is necessary that the conditions in which 
it will thrive shall be developed the active encouragement of all those aspects of life which will intensify social cohesion is of great importance and this necessitates on the part of state a recognition of the need to minimize the conflicts which may arise from the opposition of some individual and social interests and the reconciliation of those interests requires the utilization of what herring refers to as the levers the levers of social motion and these levers are of two types egoistic levers and altruistic levers the egoistic levers are reward and coercion the reward is seen in terms of private gain the threat of coercion is a vital element of in law herring sees that effectiveness of legal rules within society as depending on compulsion and force and this necessitates that the state shall not shall possess shall possess an absolute monopoly of the right to exercise coercion now without this element rule of rule, rule of law will be like like a fire which does not burn and then comes the altruistic levers that is for example feeling of duty or of particular significance in the creation of social interest now herring suggests that the levers be utilized in a combination which will create and intensify the significance of social ends now the object of society the very purpose for which it is brought into existence is the securing of the satisfaction of the totality of human wants now in that process which involve coercion and the reconciliation of apparently contradictory interests the law will be of much importance now herring categorizes these wants in a very unusual fashion if you see and these wants are extra legal mixed legal and purely legal now the balancing of these wants or interest will realize an appropriate equilibrium and to this equilibrium herring refers a realized partnership of the individual and society now herring's definition of law requires consideration in the light of his view of men society and law now in his final analysis herring view law as social purposive phenomenon enabling man to add the quality of his being individually and socially but to herring life is not here to be a servant of concepts but the concepts are here to serve life with this i will end the session and in coming session we are going to read about uh pounds theory of law